Sierra Leone has come a long way since its civil war ended in 2001. Lush lands, mineral resources and newfound stability are some of today's draws in the territory founded for freed slaves in 1787 under this very cotton tree, an iconic symbol in downtown Freetown. The most significant development this year is the resumption of iron ore exports, more than 30 years after the industry collapsed. Higher commodity prices, newer technologies and massive investment in everything from road and rail to river transport promise dividends. The International Monetary Fund says two iron ore mines alone, from London Mining and an even larger project from African Minerals, both listed on AIM, will deliver an extra billion dollars to the tiny economy this year, sending the country's 2012 growth rate up to 35.9%. The risks of putting too many eggs in a steel basket are already all too clear. The IMF had earlier predicted the country would grow at 51.4% this year. Their speedy downgrade illustrates the risks for so small a country becoming hostage to a single resource and external shocks. Finance Minister Samura Kamara says that's exactly why the country is keen to say for a rainy day. By 2015, we should be we should look at be looking at more positive scenarios going forward, and that's when we intend to to, to set up what normally is called a, a special sovereign wealth fund, where you try to do some savings for for the future, either busy in, in, in using the funds to accumulate capital, national assets for the future. Other miners say production is looking up. Koidu Holdings, owned by Israeli magnate Benny Steinmetz's group, says it will produce more than four times as many carrots this year as last, after a $200 million expansion. They say the prospects are so good, they want to expand even further, investing a billion dollars over the next five years to export an annual 2.5 million carrots. Leaving the country's tarnished image of blood diamonds far behind it, much of Koidu's output will end up in the window displays of high-end jewelers Tiffany & Co. Three of the top, uh, top ten largest stones in the world were discovered in this area, this specific area. All from the alluvials, but from this area, meaning that they come from this source. Also, if you do an analysis of our size distribution, the indications are, for every 80,000 carats, there must be a diamond above 80 carats. Whatever the risks along the way, perhaps the fate of the army represents the single most impressive turnaround for the country. Once home to the world's largest peacekeeping force and with an army hostage to coups and drawn from rebels and criminals, today's fighting forces are so reformed they are even about to send their own soldiers to Somalia, a failed state, as peacekeepers themselves. Officials say it is payback time. Payback time doesn't mean um, retaliating. Payback time in this sense means that we as the Sagalunians, um, other countries came to assist us during our whole crisis period for which we ended up peacefully and we are now enjoying the peace they supported at that time. So we are also going out to reach other people, other countries, to make sure they too equally enjoy peace in their own country or in their states. Beautiful beaches and old Creo streets provide draws for tourism, another budding sector, but one stymied by poor facilities for now. Providing everything from electricity and roads to strong hospitality and even a smooth airport crossing will be a struggle for a long time yet. Sierra Leone has some of the most beautiful beaches going. It has rainforests and mountains and hidden waterfalls. But getting here is pretty tough. The airport is across the water over here, and to get there you have to take a boat that takes 30 minutes. The country has tried helicopters, ferries and hovercrafts before, but there have always been a problem. So for now, it's a speedboat. Katrina Manson, Freetown, Financial Times.